Good morning, it is Hannah here with Rundle's Urban Farm and this is going to be our week 10 garden tour. Um, we're a little late, a couple days late on the garden tour, um, but I've got a lot to show you. The tomatoes are now taller than I am and they're doing really well on both different trellis methods. Um, and I've got a lot of winter squash starting to produce. Um, one of the spaghetti squash is almost ready to harvest. And I'm gonna talk about which squash can cross. And if you try saying that really fast, you'll get super tongue tied. Um, but which squash cross? Um, because there's a lot of confusion over whether zucchinis can cross with certain winter squash. And if your winter squash cross, are they going to look funky this season or will the crosses show up in the next season? So I will talk about that and I explain which squash cross and when it shows up. Um, so enjoy this week 10 garden tour. All right, so we'll start here with our container squash. We've got a little kabocha growing here bunch of male flowers and some of them are going up this trellis here um, hopefully we'll have some more female blossoms soon we've got our then we've got our even more winter squash over here on this trellis and we've got a spaghetti squash here that is almost ripe these are green gold um, those two are earlier in their growing process. And then this one is what I expect the final color to be. Um, but we've got quite a few squash on here. And then that last one is uh, Oregon. And this is the first uh, Oregon squash that we have on the vine so far. And then we have our some Swiss chard, some carrots, and there's actually, Right down here, there's a very large, uh, this is a Long, long Rouge, Rouge Sang carrot. Uh, so it looks like we're gonna get some real nice ones here. Um, this space didn't grow, and so I planted some new carrots, and you can see there's a few coming up here. Um, some bell peppers that are doing very well. Cilantro that has gone to seed and I plan to harvest this as coriander once I think you harvest it once they start to turn brown, which they're getting close. Um, more peppers, cosmos, uh, eggplant, and I expect these to start producing soon. I'm pretty sure we had eggplant by this time last year. Um, some banana peppers. So this here is a poblano pepper. Um, flowers. Basil, which I was hoping the basil I planted from seed would come up, but it hasn't yet. Um, lettuce, Swiss chard, lots of flowers and beans. And these are the dragon tongue bush beans and they have finally started to produce. So I've got a few I need to harvest. The first few it produced, um, there were only like two or three. So I'm leaving these on the vine and I will harvest the seeds at the end of the season. Um, this is a delicata squash and we've got one that's almost a uh, female blossom almost ready to open up. And then more cosmos. These sunflowers here, I think the chops are getting eaten off by squash or by squ not by squash, by deer or by squirrels. So if anybody knows how to discourage them from doing that, this is the second year that's happened. Um, and then we will go inside and take a look at the rest of the garden. So here is our crop of fall bush beans. I believe these are also dragon tongue bush beans. And then 
here I've got a little couple little watermelon a couple more watermelon and another one back in there we'll see if they do anything this tomato from last year is starting to blossom and it looks like we have one little fruit set here so I'm not sure what variety that's going to be but it'll be fun to find out we've got this San Marzano here which is doing very well if you look down the line here the tomatoes are getting very tall uh, some of them are well well taller than I am um, we've got a lot of green fruit here I believe this plant the black creme has a tomato that is finally starting to turn and get some color on it there um, we've got some wild boar indigo apple and those are just gorgeous um, I think we've got a lot more Cherokee purples here on the vine this one's also starting to blush finally um, more tomatoes squash trellis this uh, kabocha here and another kabocha back there we've got our paste tomatoes which have reached the top of the trellis they're doing very nicely some of these guys are really big this it's larger almost as large as my fist so th that's that's pretty impressive for a paste tomato I haven't grown paste varieties that are that large before. Um, I believe that's the church. And then we've got German pink and smiley and the others down there. And then of course we've got our zucchini, which I think somewhere in here, those ones keep dying and falling off. Um, I'm not sure if that's a lack of calcium. Some of them are surviving. And then we've got a couple gray zucchini right there. And then our cantaloupe. Right here. The cantaloupe is starting to vine up the trellis. And our mystery squash has potentially revealed itself as a pumpkin. We'll see if that's what it proves to be, but it looks very much like a sugar pumpkin. That brings me to our discussion on which squash can cross. So this is a squash that we allowed to grow out of our compost pile. The vine is reaching all the way out here. Um, and I would say that that is probably, a, I don't know, 20 foot vine, at least 16 feet. And it is quite prolific. We've got a variety of funny looking little squash on here. And you can see there's a white part at the end of the squash and then they start out green. But as you can see from this one over here that looks much more mature, they ripen to a very vibrant orange and they still have the, the green cup on the end. This is the squash that we allowed to grow in our compost pile as an experiment. And as you can see, it is some sort of cross of the varieties we grew last year because that is not a, a known variety of squash right there. So which squash can actually cross? We've got um, two, two, types of, two main types of squash. We've got summer squash and we've got winter squash. And then within the winter squash family there are four different types of uh, there are four different families of winter squash there's curcubita maxima curcubita pepo curcubita muscata and i'm not remembering the fourth one right at the moment yeah so the curcubita the different uh curcubita plants can only cross within their specific family so if you have two different 
plants that are in the Curcubita pepo family, which is the most common one, they can cross. So zucchini is typically in the Curcubita pepo family and most pumpkins are in the Curcubita pepo family as well. So zucchini and pumpkins can cross. Um, butternut squash are in Curcubita mus muscato and those are the only winter squash that are very commonly grown that are in the Muscata family. So unless you're growing two varieties of, of butternut, you're probably not going to end up with crosses from that family, which means you can go ahead and save those seeds each year. Um, Curcubita maxima is another family of squash and those typically include like your kabocha squash, uh, your buttercup squash, a Big Max pumpkin is one pumpkin variety that is actually Curcubita maxima. Um, so those all can cross and it turns out that that is what, that is this cross here. Um, that is what we have. It is a Curcubita maxima variety um, and last year I determined which varieties this could cross from by figuring out which families each type of squash was in. And only two, well, three were in Curcubita maxima. The kabocha, the buttercup squash, and the uh, Big Max pumpkin. Now the Big Max pumpkin and the buttercup squash were growing right next to each other. And based on this uh, squash's habit of growth and appearance, we determined that it was a cross between a Big Max pumpkin and a buttercup squash. You noticed, uh, let me see, you can see here on the end of this squash, this one's not a prime example, but this is the cup part that is inherited from the uh, buttercup squash, but buttercup squashes are normally this dark green color that you can see on the end of the squash and not the orange with the uh, light orange streaks. That is typical of the Big Max pumpkin. And also the buttercup squashes typically max out at about that size there on that squash, which is compared to my fist, it's probably a three to five pound pumpkin. Some of these are rather large and a Big Max squash can grow up to 70 pounds. So these definitely inherited the size and vigorousness of the Big Mac pumpkin. Okay, so there you have your answer on which squash varieties can cross. Now, if the squash varieties are going to cross, when are you gonna see those differences show up? So uh, your, your your Maxima and Pepo squash, those are the most common ones to cross. Now, if your zucchini and your pumpkin cross this year, are they going to look super wonky? They, the answer is no. They will not start showing signs of the cross until you grow out the seeds next year. So if you grow a zucchini this year and it crosses with a pumpkin, you will harvest a zucchini. Now, if you, harvest the seeds from that zucchini and grow it next year, you will end up harvesting something weird that looks like a cross between a zucchini and a pumpkin. Um, if you have a kabocha and a buttercup squash that cross this year, you're gonna harvest one or the other. It's not gonna be a cross this year. But if you plant those seeds next year, you'll probably get some wonky hybrid. Um, so there's no concern that your plants would cross this year and that they would reflect that cross. Um, so if you're just worried about them crossing and, and what you're going to get this year when you harvest, you don't need to worry about that. They'll be just fine. If you're worried about uh, harvesting seeds next year, you'll want to be careful about allowing them to be cross-pollinated. Um, if you do end up with a strange looking pumpkin or zucchini, you probably, the seeds you got probably were cross-pollinated last season. So typically seed companies are pretty careful about this 
and they don't allow varieties to cross. But that it can happen on occasion, and if you get a wonky squash this year, it's probably because the seeds that you purchased crossed last year. Finish our garden tour here with a look at the different bagged squash. We are getting our first flowers on these, and we actually have our first uh, female flower over here which has already been pollinated and is closing up. I did hand pollinate this. We've got a little uh, bumblebee that decided to make it in and make it out before it closed up. Lots of blossoms on these plants here. Is the cucumber trellis with a few cucumbers here and there. We've been harvesting enough for several quarts of pickles already. We've got our tomatoes, peppers, and this funny looking guy here. <clears throat> and then we've got strawberries which are starting to produce the ever-bearing crop again right here and then we've got our front bed which has been attacked by some deer so we've got it covered in bedding again we've got a kabocha squash here and this beauty bloomed today another kabocha squash in there which is doing very well all right so now you know which squash can cross and what you'll be what you can plan on for this year's harvest um, your squash will be consistent to the variety this year, but if you choose to save seeds, you're going to want to be careful about which ones could potentially have crossed, unless you want to just grow some crazy squash hybrids, which is what we have going on this year. So, um, if you are growing multiple varieties of squash this year, you can look them up. Uh, just type in to your, uh, search browser, um, uh, acorn squash species and it will bring up what species that is. I believe acorn squash are Curcubita pepo and if you are also growing zucchini your acorn squash and your zucchini squash can cross. Um, same if you're growing a pumpkin. If you are growing only one variety of buttercup squash you can go ahead and save those seeds because they will not cross with any of your other squash that you're growing and if you're growing a a uh, kabocha squash and a buttercup squash, they have the potential to cross. Um, so if you're growing just one variety of curcubita pepo, one variety of curcubita maxima, and one variety of curcubita muscata, you are safe to save all of those seeds for next year. Um, and curcubita, another question people have is whether uh, cucumbers and squash can cross. And the answer is, the simple answer is no, they cannot cross because they are in different families. So I hope that you enjoyed this week 10 garden tour and that you learned a little something about squash and about which seeds to save and which seeds uh, you'll get some crazy hybrids from. So enjoy gardening and I will see you back next week.